Well, welcome back again, guys. Um, in this video, I want to talk about what's wrong with boys and the schooling system. In fact, what's just wrong with um, the schooling system in general? Um, and I'm going to talk freely uh, over the next kind of 10, 15 minutes or so. And I hope some of these ideas can be useful to you. But essentially, the, just to give you context, over the last kind of uh, two and a bit years, well, three and a bit years, um, I have been working with young people. I've been working in a school. I have been going to uh, schools, colleges, universities, youth centres and talking to young people about mental health. And in the job that I previously was doing, which was in a school, I was responsible for uh, behaviour. So I was part of the inclusion team. And essentially, any time a student was vaping, there was a relationship problems, a student was refusing to uh, come into school, um, there was conflict, there was a fight, anything like that, my job was to deal with such things. So not only have I got insight in terms of dealing with young people, but also I have dealt, I've got um, a lot of, I've been very, very lucky because I've been able to have insight because I go all over London to multiple schools, all the way from schools in Wimbledon, all the way to schools in um and colleges and universities in Brixton. So I've been able to see the full spectrum of different schools. And I go to private schools and I go to state schools and I go to grammar schools. So my insight is probably slightly a bit different, but essentially the reason why I wanted to do this video is because a lot of people, um, wherever I go, are always asking me, Kasim, what is going on with the schooling system? What is going on with young people? Particularly what's going on with boys? Why is it, why is it that the suicide rate is going up so high? Why are so many men struggling in particular? This does not mean that women or young girls are not struggling, but in particular, let's just look at boys. So I'm going to talk freely for 10 minutes or so because I've wrote down several things and I hope you find them useful. Okay. So the first thing that I wrote down here is that the formal education uh, system isn't meant for every single child and pretty much all of us if you're parent you're non-parent you've been if you've been through the British formal education system you have come to the realization that it isn't meant for some kids and the issue that you've got with this is that those kids who it's not meant for unfortunately are forced to go through the system nevertheless and my experience has shown me that it there is like an essence, there is something within the child which is squashed, which is diminished as they go through the schooling system because the schooling system is a bit like a box and unless you fit in that box, you will be cast out by that system. And so many kids who, for example, have ADHD but are super creative, but they just struggle to be able to sit in a classroom for an hour back to back to back, those kids are just basically constantly punished. They're constantly being reprimanded. They're constantly being taken out of their lessons. And it isn't their fault and it isn't the teacher's fault, but there are several policies that are in place that the teachers have to follow, whether the school has written them or not. There are government legislation that require um, certain uh, processes that people have to follow. And so it's really, 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 really difficult to become a teacher. And the thing is, um, I, well, rather not to become a teacher, but rather to be a teacher or somebody who works in a school at the moment, because there isn't a lot of freedom, right? In fact, one of the things that I want to talk about in a bit is that a lot of people are leaving the education system. And I was having this conversation yesterday with a teacher, a head of year at a school, and a lot of people are leaving the education system, but it's not the people who have a long tenure. It is the young people who've just joined um, the uh, education system. And many of them are working there for one or two or three years, and then they're completely leaving it altogether. Um, and it's just very, 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 very difficult because it's like a a ticking box exercise. You're no longer being a teacher. You're spending your time on ticking boxes, on filing reports and, and ensuring like all of these other things that are just nothing to do with the master's degree or the degree that you took in PE or teaching or English or science or whatever it may be. So the first thing that's really important is that you have to understand that a lot of young people are really struggling because they're not supposed to be in the formal education system, but the formal education system 
forces them to have to be due to legislation, due to the law that we have in England. Now, you can complain about how that's wrong or whatever, but I deal with the facts and it's very, very, very difficult, of course, for us normal people to change that legislature currently. Um, and the, the sad thing about this is that, of course, there are some people who are well off and can afford to send their kids to a grammar school or to a specialist school, let's say they're naturally uh, musically gifted, they can send them somewhere like that, right? Or they can um, send them to a football academy. Um, and actually, on the opposite side of this, um, at the school or the parents, if their child is really severe or is really like, for example, autistic, um, they can actually uh, ask for grants and stuff like that. And my issue is, and this is why I think that there is such a large proportion or, or cohort of young people who are going by the wayside and who are struggling, is that there are these guys, these boys in the middle who are just basically being missed because they're not they don't meet the thresholds in order to um to qualify for a lot of support and a lot of the resources that are available for people who are on the extreme end of either spectrum i don't know if that kind of makes sense but um yeah i think that's a, a quite a big thing the other thing that i wrote down attached to this is that parents aren't doing things outside of school to foster their children's talents yeah and i say this to you if uh, again, I spend my time going all the way across multiple schools, right, all the way across London, and I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, the one consistent thing that every single teacher and school says is that the parents are not engaging with their children. The, the parents just basically don't want to know, and it, you will listen. All of them say the same things to the same thing to me, right? As soon as those children leave their parents' house, they're the school response they're the school's responsibility. And yesterday I was I went back to um the school that I used to work at and it just so happened to be parents' evening. And the amount of parents who did not turn up to their children's parent parents' evening is shocking. I was like, surely, what do you mean they didn't turn up? And huge amounts of parents didn't turn up to their school, their children's parents' eve, uh, parents' evening, which just begins to give you an indication as to how many people are just really not interested in their children's lives. They may, <coughs> they may be feeding their children, they may be clothing their children, but when it comes to actually um, spending time and fostering their children and helping them with wisdom and helping them become who they are capable of becoming, a lot of parents are simply not doing it. And you can say whatever you want to say. And uh, the, the issue that I have with making this statement is there's going to be a lot of parents who are going to be say, say well, Kassim, I attend my child's um, dot, 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 or I'm always there for this. Yes, but I'm not talking about you, right? Those people aren't the people who I'm talking about. Those people's kids are doing all right, right, to some degree. Um, I'm talking about the kids whose parents don't do this, which is a large minority. This isn't like a small uh, small uh, percentage. This is like a large minority of parents who don't, who don't do this, and it causes loads and loads of issues. And so what I would suggest to any parent, really, is how much time are you spending um, on fostering your child's talents, right? Um, how much are you spending on understanding the different technologies that are available today and then learning them so that you can maybe perhaps make suggestions to your child about different ways that they can manifest their gifts? Um, a teacher yesterday, she said to me, um, she, we were talking about, basically, she had had three parents not turn up to the parents' evening and she was saying to me, Kasim, one of the big problems that I have is that a lot of parents and the schooling system is teaching kids that school is simply there to um, learn your GCSE so that you can get a job. And she said, that's not the role of education. The role of education is to basically equip young people with an opportunity to go and um, acquire different knowledge so that they can um, be able to uh, get different perspectives so that they can basically op open their options out to th then being able to pursue what they want to do. And so many people are narrowing their opportunities, both from a parental perspective and from a child's perspective, um, 
in that the child only sees school simply as a vehicle to getting a job but that is not what it just is there for right there are different there are different um there are different avenues that a person can use school for um uh, uh, to their advantage in the future and it, it we're not just you know for example one of the things is friendships right a lot of young people don't realize that one of the advantages of going to school is that you can create friendships you have an environment where it's safe to ask questions right so that's just that topic and i'm just on point one but this gives you a level of how complex this issue is secondly is that we need more men in the education system in fact we need just more men genuinely um across areas where um young people are involved and i understand it because because of safeguarding a lot of individuals and not just safeguarding but also in terms of um money wise a lot of the jobs that work with young people they just the money is not good and if you're a man and you're responsible for your family you know some of these jobs working with children you're going to be earning twenty thousand pounds twenty one thousand pounds it's not really enough to be able to be a provider if that is something which you wish to do or to be uh to be able to really pay your bills today right and so because of the low nature of salaries it means that a lot of men right are not going to take positions in uh, the in the schooling system right in areas where you have to look after children and this is a major 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 problem because obviously women bring a certain element to the development of children but so do men right i go to workshops and one of the reasons why i'm i'm busier than most of my colleagues is because when i go to workshops and um, people see that I'm a man. I'm a man. They want me to go back again and again and again, and they recommend other people, and they're like, "Oh my god!" And one of the things that I try to explain to people and tell people is that you have to understand that a lot of boys in the in their developmental formal education years do not very often come into contact with a man in a positive light. Usually when boys come into contact with a man, they use of being excluded, suspended or something on those lines. Unless, of course, they have like a, a football team or something like that. Many of these boys rarely ever get to meet a man who is talking to them about progressing their life, about about happiness, about mental health, about careers and things like that until they get to like the college level. But by then they've been so demoralized and they just, they've given up on education, right? And um, I've come to realize, and this is just my own personal opinion, by the way, that boys need role models more than girls need role models. This is the conclusion that I've, I've arrived at. I've just noticed that boys just seem to do much better in life when they have someone to tell them what to do. I remember I once was um, interviewing a group of guys whose fathers who grew up in homeless, um, fatherless homes. And I said to them, why is a big issue? Why are you like talking about this? Why is this such a big thing? And one of the things that the guy said struck me. He said, well, when you don't have like a role model or a father, you have to have all the answers yourself. You have to figure everything out yourself. And I found that profound because I'd never really thought about it like that. But it's tiring having to have all the answers. It is tiring having to have um, the vision all the time and having to think all the time. It is absolutely exhausting. So, again... I would just just say that one of the major things that we, is a big problem in the education system and the schooling system, um, particularly in a reference to boys, is that we just don't have that many men. And if you don't believe me, just go to your school and and ask the school to give you the percentage of men that work in that school versus women. By the way, when I talk about this subject, I am not saying there's anything wrong with women being in the schooling system. I'm just simply saying it would help if we had more men in the schooling system, not, at the, of course, at the consequence of women or by not 
um, giving women the equal opportunity as well. I'm just saying it would be great to see more men interact with young boys and role model for them and, you know, and give a different perspective. The third thing that I wrote down here is that we need more parental guidance and not contradictory messaging. Pretty much every single school that I go to and I talk to them about this subject, one of the things that they echo back to me is that earlier on I said to you that a lot of parents aren't getting involved with their children and this is causing a massive problem because what's happening is that the schooling, the school has now become not only the parent but also the education system, meaning that the schooling is basically responsible for practically everything apart from feeding the children and housing them, right? And this is become a problem because a lot of the things that parents are supposed to teach their children, like the basics, the fundamentals, wearing the correct school uniform, speaking properly, not swearing, stuff like that, that has now fallen to the responsibility of the school to be able to do. And this becomes a problem because there is now contradictory messaging. The school is constantly drumming to the child, you have to wear the correct uniform and you have to get to your classes on time and you don't wanna be vaping. The issue that you have is the parents are doing it. The parents are doing the very things that the school is telling the children not to do. In school, they're telling them about alcohol and how alcohol is not necessarily the best thing. Here's the problem. They go home and their mum or dad or their uncle or grandparents are smoking or vaping or they're drinking every day, right? Um, or uh, uh, you, even the parents are talking about not wanting go to, to go to work or they're going to be late or wherever it may, it may be. But the problem is that there is a, 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 a disconnect and incongruence in the messaging that is happening. Um, and part of that, obviously, is that society has changed. We no longer live in close-knit communities anymore. But I have to tell you that this is a major problem. This is a problem in that I'm telling you, the um, being as somebody who was obviously responsible for the behaviour, the amount of my time that I spent trying to talk to young people about the most basic things... Take your rubbish in. Put take your if once you finish your food, take your rubbish and put it into the bin. Um, when you go to the toilet, wash your hands. Like these basic, basic things. Like ask questions from people. Right? Listen to people. Don't be on your phone when you're talking, having a conversation with other people. These basic, basic things. And I've got to tell you, the kids don't have them. I said to somebody um, uh, the other day, I can't remember. Oh, no, I was at a school in Richmond, um, a private school. And I was saying to um, one of the, the, the teachers there that I've realized what the main sort of crux is in society. And this is just my opinion again. What I've noticed is that what is lacking in young people is wisdom. A lot of young people have a lot of information at their disposal. That isn't the problem. Young people can use Chad GBT. They can Google anything. They can snap everything. They can get the book. They can order anything. That is not the problem. What they're missing is to know, oh, if I go onto this website or if I do make this decision, where is it going to lead to? They are struggling to discern between what are the consequences, the long-term consequences of me doing this and not doing it. They are struggling with being able to make a, com a decision and really having conviction and just following through on anything. And they don't want to because they haven't seen it anywhere, right? Society is tiptoeing its way around practically everything. And so what I would share with you on this topic is that, let me go back slightly because I want to say something which is important. When I was working in that school, I, I basically, when I, I, because I was dealing with behavior every day, I spent a, about a year essentially trying to look for the patterns in all of the children who I dealt with. And there were two things that were consistent with all the children that I dealt with in that school in terms of behavior. The first is if you went on their file and you... Um, because, you know, in a school, all these kids have files, right, which says their name, their address, their contact details, all that sort of stuff. If you've got any allergies, that sort of stuff. If you opened up the file of every child, practically all, the majority of the children who were you were dealing with in regards to some sort of be behavior, I'm not talking about those kids who are basically are good 
all the time, but then every now and then they have like something happen. I'm not talking about those kids. I'm talking about the kids who are consistently, um, you know, misbehaving. They're constantly in trouble. Those kids, the first thing that was consistent with all of them is if you open up their file, there's almost always never a father contact on their file. That's the first thing. There's almost always never. It's shocking, right? And the second is that when you call the parents and you tell them that their child has done something, they've been vaping, they've got into a fight, they've um, smashed a locker, they punched another student, the parent will side with the child and not the school. And this is a problem because you have this incongruence in the messaging, right? And who do you think the child is going to side with and, and, and take as the main sort of decision maker? The school or their parents? Of course, they're going to take their parents, not the school. And that causes a huge problem. There is a, a discontinuity and a dis, this incongruence in, um, in, in the messaging that children are receiving. The other thing that I wrote down here is, um, is that kids aren't extreme. Yeah, kids who are, and I talked a little bit about this. Kids who are not on the extreme side of things are overlooked, meaning that the way the schooling system works is that unless your child is like got something extreme about them, they've got they're really high on the autism spectrum. They um, are super bright. Essentially, they'll be overlooked. They will be overlooked. And I say this, and people don't like me saying this, and people get upset when I say this, but my experience has shown me that in a school, let's say a school is given £1,000 for the year, and they can use it however much, however they wish to use that money, on salaries, on uniforms, on um, school trips, or whatever. If you look at the majority of the money that is obviously not the core things like paying the rent of the building and stuff like that. The majority of that thousand pounds will be spent on the most naughtiest kids uh, or the kids that have need the most support or the kids who are super gifted in something. And everybody else basically will be ignored, right? And they will just kind of get overlooked and go through the education system and they won't get that extra support. This is why I said to you that parents need to start outside of the schooling system doing things that foster their children's gifts because the schooling system simply does not have the resources to be able to do it because of the way legislation is done. The way legislation is done is that the majority of the money, a bit like with the government, has to go to those who need it the absolute most. Not the people who are who kind of need it. No, the ones that need it absolute most. That's where the money goes to. And of course, those who are super talented, super gifted, those, of course, get a lot of the money. So I would share with you that one of the issues that we have at the moment is a lot of kids are being overlooked. And even if, if you, when you look at even like things like ADHD, many people don't get or don't get diagnosed with ADHD because they they don't manifest behaviors particularly boys right boys some boys don't manifest um ADHD outwardly they're not violent they're not always like sitting up and down they're not always moving right for them it's more inward um and as a result of that many of them get overlooked and they don't actually end up being diagnosed until they get into their job or something happens to them in college or university and then they get di the diagnosis. So that's one of the other things. The last thing that I would leave you with is that school has become a ticking box exercise because everyone is trying to cover their own back. This is very much true. And I talked a little bit about this earlier on. I, I said to you, the schooling system is no longer a place where, as a teacher, you go and help young people discover the truth, discover information, theorize. It is now a place where you are spending the majority of your time ticking boxes, ensuring that basically you do not get fired. And you can judge teachers and say, well, the teachers shouldn't be like that. That is the most ridiculous thing, dot, 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 dot. But I'm just telling you the reality of everyone has to pay their bills, right? What do you do? What do you do when you have to still do all of this legis legis sort of process 
procedures and policies and stuff like that, and on top of the fact that you have to mark, and on top of the fact that you are spending the majority of your time dealing with behavior and not actually teaching. What do you do as a teacher? So those are the things that I was thinking about. Obviously, there are a lot more things than that, but really I was trying to condense what I saw are the main kind of big problems that are happening with guys, with boys. Um, I don't know if you found it useful or not, but I hope it's been of some use. Thank you very much for listening and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.